Hey folks, David Molnar here. Welcome back to the free video series on Aperture. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about depth of field. And I have a surprise for you guys. I have an amazing lesson on depth of field in my course, Master Your Camera. And I wanna go ahead and play part of that lesson for you right now. All right, so in this lesson, we wanna talk about depth of field. What is depth of field? Depth of field is in every single image that we have, right? Depth of field is the amount of space or the amount of distance that's actually in focus. It's not where is in focus, it's how much is in focus. And I'm not talking about sideways, I'm talking about depth, right? So, so many people say, hey, do that shot, do that effect, do that depth of field effect or whatever. And the reality is, like I said, depth of field is in every single image. It's how much depth is in focus, right? So you could have a very shallow depth of field and just have the tip of my nose in focus and my eyes be blurry. Or you could have an infinite depth of field and you could have my entire face be in focus and also the mountains that are you know, in the background. Not in this scene, but you know, imagine I'm in Colorado or something um, and that you're seeing in John Denver. Anyways, if it's an infinite large or large depth of field, then everything or nearly everything is in focus, you know, from my face and behind me, right? And a shallow depth of field is just a very, very narrow amount. So you get it. You guys have seen those photos where it's like a gorgeous portrait um, and you have, you know, you, you have your you know, model that's like crisp and in focus, her eyes are in focus, and then right behind her is completely blurry. That is a shallow depth of field, right? And, then, and it looks awesome, and a lot of people think of you know, photos that, are, uh, that have a shallow depth of field as looking professional, especially when it comes to you know, portraits. Um, now, how do you actually get that effect of a shallow depth of field, or even a large or infinite, or even mid-sized depth of field? Well, I will tell you. So there are three main factors that go into um, how deep or how shallow your depth of field actually is, okay? And the first factor, the most important factor, is aperture, is the size of the hole. So, so many of you guys have been, you know, kind of wondering, why do we need these different combinations to balance the seesaw? Why do we need a slower or faster shutter speed? Why do we need a smaller or larger size hole um, for our aperture? Um, and the, there's a lot of different reasons for that, but one of the reasons could be and should be and is um, to control your depth of field. This, this plays hand in hand with your composition, with your artistic style, and trying to determine where the focal point of your image should be. Um, and you know, depth of field can really, you know, can give you a lot of creative freedom in those things. So when you understand how to take manual control of your camera, how to get the correct exposure, and how to utilize different combinations of shutter speed, ISO, and aperture, then you can say, hey, I've got a correct exposure, it looks good, but the depth of field um, is too large, you know, the background looks too crisp and I would really like to isolate my subject because I want to, you know, have a shallower depth of field behind them and make it look a little bit more professional or at least go more towards that effect. So here's the thing, with aperture, which is the first variable to controlling depth of field, um, the larger the size of the hole, the shallower the depth of field is, right? So a very large size hole, I'm not talking about numbers right now, we can talk about the numbers in just a minute, but a large size hole actually creates a shallower depth of field, okay? So if you have a hole this big, right, then you're only gonna have the eyes in focus. And you may, like my nose could be out of focus in the foreground, and then you know that my ears could be out of focus as well, because the the, the focus or the depth of field is so narrow that only my eyes are crisp. And it, by the way, if you have a, a depth of field that's that narrow, that shallow, you definitely wanna make sure, and you're shooting a portrait, make sure the person's eyes are in focus, not their nose or not their ears, because otherwise it'll feel off, right? If someone's eyes are in focus, then it always looks like it's in focus, regardless of how shallow or deep the depth of field actually is. Okay, so if we have a very large size hole, right? and the eyes are in focus and everything isn't, then if, if we're like, hey, the, the person's nose is out of focus, I would like that to be in focus as well. So then you can make that hole a little bit smaller. And as you make that hole smaller, the depth of field gets deeper or larger, right? So if I have this size hole and I go like this, the depth of field, more space is in focus. The depth of field gets larger, right? Makes sense? So let's say if I just have my eyes in focus 
and I go down, then and uh, I go down an aperture size, right? The hole is a little bit smaller. Then now maybe my nose is in focus as well. And if I make that hole a little bit smaller, then maybe even my ears are now in focus. And if I make that, if I keep on making that hole a little bit smaller, then now maybe like the immediate background or my shoulders or something in focus. And as I make it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, you know, the exaggerated effect is once it's a pinhole, um, then all of a sudden my face and the mountains are in focus. All right, so I know this is complicated. We're gonna demonstrate this in just a second, but just a quick recap on how aperture works. The larger the size of the hole, the narrower or the shallower the depth of field, the amount of space that's actually in focus. And the smaller that hole, the larger or more infinite the depth of field is, and the more depth that is in focus. Okay, that's how aperture controls the depth of field. That's variable number one. Okay, so I wanna take a second and demonstrate how depth of field works um, and how aperture controls uh, your depth of field. So remember, the larger size hole lets more light in, but it also creates our shallower depth of field. So less distance is actually in focus at our, with our larger hole, and that's what we're starting with. We're starting with 2.0, which is a very large size aperture. A small value, meaning it's a smaller number, but a larger size hole, which lets more light in and creates a shallower depth of field. So let's go ahead and go through the gamut. I'm gonna take a picture here, okay? And I'm, I'm excited for you to see how this depth of field actually changes as we increase our aperture number, three clicks, which does one stop, but it's actually gonna make the rest of the lines a little bit more crisp, a little bit more in focus. So let's go three clicks again, one, two, three. Uh, sorry, I accidentally, accidentally did four there. And so every, every time we do that, we're creating a larger depth of field. Remember, three clicks is a whole stop of light, which it should be making this image darker, but because I'm shooting in aperture priority mode, it's actually, the camera's automatically calculating the ISO and the shutter speed for me to keep the exposure to be the exact same, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is go up to 5.6 and take a picture here. And you can see that depth just increasing. The other limes are just getting more and more crisp. One, two, three, up to F8. Our ISO is really cranking up right now automatically. But you can see that focus, that crisp focus is expanding and the depth of field is getting deeper. So let's go three more clicks. One, two, three to F11. You can see more and more limes in focus. All right, one, two, three, up to F16. And you can see almost all of the limes crisp and in focus. We haven't changed anything except for our aperture, right? Let's do one more, one, two, three. All right, let's take this picture and look at that. It looks like almost everything is in focus at F22. And then that's where we max out on this lens. We can't go any more. Some lenses will go up to 32, but not this lens. Most lenses don't. So F22 is gonna be your deepest or largest depth of field and F2 um, is gonna be super shallow. So you saw the whole gamut um, of uh, you know, aperture and how it affects depth of field. All right, hope you enjoyed that lesson on depth of field from my course, Master Your Camera. In the next lesson, we're gonna be talking about that mysterious word called bokeh.